Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video, we're going to be solving a homemade complex equation. Why do I call these homemade? Because I kind of thought about the idea, but that doesn't mean it's hard to come up with. So here's, what, here's my equation that I hope you enjoy. Z is a complex number. When you divide it by its absolute value or modulus, you get this interesting complex number, which is 3 over 5 plus 4 over 5i. So if you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos. I made a playlist of lecture videos where I go over the basics of complex numbers, starting with the definition and going into more complex topics, and then also made a number of really good problems that I categorize as easy, medium, and hard. You can also suggest any problem that I categorized as a certain category, uh, you can justify, hopefully, uh, that it should be in a different category. Anyways, those are hard to categorize, but I tried my best. And here's our equation. So how do we solve such an equation? We'll start with the painful method, which is the first method. Okay, the first method in general is like no pain, no gain. Hopefully, it'll teach you something. So first method is, since the name of this channel is A plus BI, that's why I named it that way. I'm going to call Z A plus B I. There's a reason behind that, right? Come on. So what does that imply? It implies that if Z is equal to A plus B I, absolute value of Z, which is the modulus again, is going to be the square root of A squared plus B squared. Awesome. Now, we have a single equation, so be careful, but you have two variables. What is that going to make? Let's see. Okay, I just couldn't think of the word. So... Let's plug it in. We have a plus b i divided by the square root of a squared plus b squared equals 3 over 5 plus 4 over 5 i. Great. Now at this point, you may want to just distribute because we want to set these complex numbers equal to each other and then hopefully we'll get something from there, right? Great. Let's see. Uh, I can go ahead and there's actually two ways to approach it, by the way, I just realized. You can go ahead and treat this as is, and I'll show you how, or like as is, I would call it as is, or cross multiply, let's call it CM, and then work it out. Make sense? So let's start with the as is method. What is as is? <laughs> as is means you're not going to do anything. You're just going to split, separate the real parts and the imaginary parts. I think the first approach is kind of like a 1A, I guess we could call this, maybe A and B. Uh, basically is more intuitive, I think maybe, I don't know. It's It seems a little better uh, because we can directly compare these numbers. Anyways, so what does that mean? It means that this number is equal to three over five and this number is equal to four over five, right? Real parts equal real parts and vice versa. So how do you handle this? Like where do you go from here? Well, just write it down and see what happens. You have two equations and two unknowns. So it should be solvable, right? I mean, we should be able to find some solutions. Are there any solutions and what are the solutions? Okay, a lot of good questions. Now, one thing I can do is I notice the presence of square root of a squared plus b squared. So... I could probably multiply both sides by that and use it as maybe a K or even better, I can divide these. When I divide these two are going to cancel out, leaving us with A over B equals 3 over 5 divided by five, 4 over 5. The 5 is also going to cancel out. When you flip and multiply, you're going to get 3 over 4. Awesome. This is good, but notice that it just gives us a ratio of A to B. It doesn't tell us specific solutions like you know, 2 plus 8i. Obviously, that's not going to satisfy this equation. I did it on purpose. I didn't want you to give away the solution. Right? I didn't want to give away the solution. But you probably saw it, right? So, that gives us a ratio. Can we get more than that? Maybe. Uh, you can just try to plug it in. Okay, so why, why don't we do this? From here, I can safely say that a is 3k, b is 4k, where k is an integer, and that's not zero. And then just plug it into one of these equations because that should give us uh, uh, more information, right? A replaced with 3K inside the radical. A squared is going to be 9K squared. B squared is going to be 16K squared. And then this should equal 3 over 5. 
and then this becomes 25k squared 3k over 25k squared when you square root it's going to be plus minus 5 and then 3 over 5 and then if k is not 0 and we know it's not 0 k cancels out we end up with something like this 3 over 5 plus minus 3 over 5 equals 3 over 5 this is weird. What do you mean plus minus? No, no, the minus sign is not going to work because negative 3 over 5, there's no way it's going to equal 3 over 5. So we kind of have to give up on the minus sign for some reason, and 3 over 5 equals 3 over 5. Uh-oh, uh I think this is called a tautology or something like that. In logic, there's a really weird name. Something that's always true. Okay, that's what I'm trying to say. Truth value equals 1. So what does that mean, though? If you didn't get any extra information from here, it's a vicious cycle. You know what that means? You're stuck with this. Okay, great. What does that mean though? A over B equals 3 over 4. That just means that there are infinitely many solutions. Seriously? Well, looks like it because the only requirement you need is the ratio of A to B, which is 3 over 4. By the way, you could probably test it uh, just by plugging in some numbers maybe. How about this? Z equals 3 plus 4i. Is that going to work? Let's test it out. What was the original equation? z divided by absolute value of z equals 3 over 5 plus 4 over 5i. Now I'm going to go ahead and replace z with that, 3 plus 4i. And what's the absolute value of 3 plus 4i? 3, 4, 5. Come on. It's 5. And that is indeed equal to this. Uh-oh. We got an identity. Nice. What about something else? Hmm. I could maybe double a and b and come up with 6 plus 8i. Is that really going to work? Maybe it won't, right? Maybe 3 plus 4i is the only answer. Let's find out. So you're going to put the z first and then divide it by the absolute value of z, which is 10. Uh-oh. This also turns out to be the same thing. No matter what I do, I'm stuck in this infinite loop because the reason behind that is think about z as r e to the i theta. When you double z, you're all doubling the modulus. Obviously, you're not really messing with the exponential. That's untouchable, right? That's the cosine sine thingy. So you're only doubling. If you're tripling, then you're tripling. Make sense? So that's kind of reasonable, right? But could we approach this problem a little differently, maybe? Let's find out. So we could also look at it this way. First of all, I'll make a common denominator because that makes sense. And then I, I realize, uh-oh, if z is equal to that, then absolute value of z is equal to that. Obviously, this doesn't mean z can only be 3 plus 4i because this is, these are ratios. Therefore, I can just multiply them by k. As long as I multiply by the k, same k, I'm good to go. Make sense? Therefore, there will be infinitely many solutions to this equation. And we can kind of write the solution set as k times 3 plus 4i, where k is not 0, k is a real number, and these are going to be all the solutions, right? If k is equal to 0, you get z equals 0, z equals 0. Uh-oh. That's a no-no because we can't divide by 0. And 0 over 0 is a whole different animal. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time in another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.